Hey everybody, welcome back to the Infinite Regression. Oh, look at its majestic infinitum. So fantastical, so horrifying. Anyway, but we're not here to stare into the abyss. We're here to play video games. And today we're going to play, uh, I don't know if we've done this before, a sports game. We're talking about bad news baseball for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing about this game is that, um, you know, the, there are so many baseball games for the NES. So many. And if you've played as many as I have, you can also say with confidence, there are so few good baseball games for the NES. Not that many. I mean, you know, uh, you get them RBI baseballs, uh, boy, mixed bag. You get them bases loaded. Uh, it depends on which one, you know. I'm partial to two, but there are people who hate bases loaded too. Anyway, it's all a whole thing. Uh, there are very few sure things. There are very few generally agreed upon classics in the area of baseball on the NES. Uh, somehow, well after the fact, everybody came around to Baseball Simulator 1.000 as being a good one, despite having the most boring name I can imagine. Um, but yeah, that one very much is a baseball simulator. The other game that people generally agree is a solid win for the NES in terms of baseball is Bad News Baseball. And here's the thing about it, is that it's uh, less of a simulation and more uh, fantastical whimsy. Uh, now, granted, it's not as over the top as like your, you know, Mario baseball games for the GameCube and the Wii and whatnot. Like, yeah, those baseball games over the top and then some, obviously, uh, because they could with the technology. But this game brings it in ways that sports games did not always bring it at the time. First of all, uh, you know, gameplay, let's talk about that. Very smooth. The batting animations are exactly what you want them to be uh, in terms of, you know, being. you can tap it and bunt. You can uh, press it. Uh, long press on the button and swing all the way around nice and smooth and fast enough to catch those pitches so you have a little bit of time to see what's coming in to make a decision and uh, try and get on top of the ball or not swing over it if it's an off-speed pitch so yes uh, you do have that uh, nice gameplay that feels like if you strike um, it's your fault. It's not just that the game is horrifically unfair. Uh, so, and uh, unless, of course, <laughs> there is an all-star mode where you're just playing it's super versus ultra and the teams are just insanely stacked and it plays so fast and every pitcher is throwing like 105 miles an hour. Yeah, that might be a bit much, but that was it was intended to be that way. Uh, but if you're playing the regular game, it feels, you know, like uh, high school or college level in terms of how fast those pitches are coming in. Does not feel like Major League Baseball scary, uh, despite what the uh, radar gun says on some of those pitches. Anyway, and the pitches, you can figure out like, okay, if I push this and then the pitch button, I get an off-speed pitch. If I pitch this and then uh, the pitch button, I'm going to get a fastball. And then if I, you know, press this way or that, uh, then I'm going to get a breaking ball inside or outside. I never figured out how to plunk a guy. I, I wish you could. I don't know if you can. But, uh, yeah, it, it seems like it would be fun to be able to plunk a guy. 
But anyway, the gameplay is some of the best I have seen in terms of pitching and batting. What about fielding? Well, the fielding is just as abysmal as every single baseball game of this era. My God, do I hate fielding in vintage baseball games. Just abysmal. Uh, because here's the thing. The, the CPU knows exactly where the ball is going, and he knows where his fielders are, even though he can't see them. Because you don't have any blips or dots or any indication of where your outfielders are. Um, and so you don't know if you should go out or come in on, you know, it, like someone hits a can of corn that would normally get picked up in any decent baseball game you know, at any reasonable level. I mean, most little leaguers would pick up these kind of hits, would catch them no problem. These are like, you know, shagging flies hits. You know, they practice this before the game, you know, and it should be easy, but I cannot think of a single game of this era where the fielding was anything but pure frustrational garbage. Uh, and I'm serious. I have played so much baseball on the NES, and I'm telling you, it is an exercise of frustration. And, and not just on the NES. Going all the way back to the Atari, playing that real sports baseball and whatnot. Ugh. It's all terrible. It's all terrible. Um, so you just have to accept that as a product of its era. But here's where this game shines. I said it was full of fantastical whimsy, and indeed it is, because it has cutscenes, like little animated cutscenes. You hit a home run, well, if it's a really high and far one, you're gonna see it shoot into outer space and then go into like hyperdrive and stuff like it's hilarious and then you you hit a regular home run that just goes up into the crowd um you get to high five your entire team and then mr t wearing the ultimate warrior makeup for some reason oh also all the umpires are bunny rabbits uh <laughs> there's that like what how okay all right we're going with it i guess this is what it is um anyway so it's it's kind of a ridiculous game in the uh you know in, in the way in which those cut scenes happen uh they're not entirely reasonable uh it's much more arcade fun than it is realistic baseball so yeah it's it's really fun for that because you hit a home run you get a good animation which is what you want and it makes it fun uh by the way this game i recommend not playing against the cpu i recommend playing against another live player because that is someone who will be able to uh they, they will be able to like uh suck at fielding just as badly as you do and not have any massive advantages over you in any appreciable way unless they're just you know better at timing the batting or whatever which is fine see that's where you don't mind losing as much as if someone's just way better at hitting than you or way better at pitching than you okay cool like i'm losing on a on a square footing but if you can't even see where your fielders are but the other guy somehow magically can which is what the cpu does just goes right to the ball every time you know or is already standing underneath it when it gets hit into the outfield you know those high pop flies uh they're just waiting underneath the ball and you're like my guy if i left him alone would be nowhere near the ball the ball would drop and there would not be an outfielder in view on the screen like it's yeah it drives me crazy but it is a product of the era you have to accept this if you don't accept this you will not play this game like it's just it's as simple as that 
It is its one major flaw, but it's also the one major flaw of every baseball game of this era. So just appreciate that for what it is. But, you know, I will say the fantastic sense of humor that this game has, its smooth gameplay, and everything else about it, it makes for a great two-player experience. Uh, you can play against the CPU. You will probably get mercy ruled, as I did every single time. I played four complete games tonight. And I lost, I got mercy ruled on every single one of them. Even when I was putting up big runs, like I, I started just crushing the ball. Uh, but the fact that I couldn't feel the ball, oh, and by the way, so many passed balls. This is, okay, this is the thing that pisses me off the most. I'll say this and then I'll put a final score on it. We'll be done. You need to know this, this is bad. And it, it will make you so angry. Um, <laughs> if you get a passed ball, like the catcher does not catch the ball when someone's throwing it home when there's a play at the plate. If that ball gets past the catcher, the catcher will not move to get it. You have to get your infielders. So you have to get the first baseman who is the closest guy who will run to it. Or it may be worse than that. You might have to get your left fielder, because I never could figure out, like, how do I get my infielders to move? I think you have to get it with your outfielders. I could be wrong, but, like, those little guys, they've got such stubby little legs, they run so slowly, and it's so insanely infuriating. And, you know, it's an inside-the-park home run every time, or an inside-the-park grand slam, as the case may be. But I'll give you a little hint on, if you if you want to play this against the CPU, I'll give you a little hint on how to play it reasonably well. If you push up on the, uh, when you throw a pitch, uh, you're gonna get a lot of, um, in the infield kind of balls. You will give up the occasional home run, but you're gonna have to deal with that. Like, you're just gonna have to deal. Uh, because the CPU will score on you, no matter what you do. Like, it is not fair in that regard, playing against the CPU. Two-player? This game is crazy fun. Uh, against the CPU, you've gotta, like, temper your expectations and use some strategy. So, you push up, then you pitch, and uh, you'll get a ball most likely to the infield if you can field it cleanly and get it thrown to the correct base. Then you'll get some outs, and then they won't hang quite so many runs on you quite so quickly. Yeah. So, th that's some good advice, just that I found in general, but... I still love this game. It's super fun. Let me put a final score on it, and then we'll be done. Okay, so Bad News Baseball, we like it. We like it quite a bit. Has a lot of charm, a lot of character. Quite possibly the best NES baseball game you are likely to play. It's not saying as much as you may think it is, but it is a statement that you can make and have it be true. So, uh, we're going a 7 out of a possible 10 old-timey baseball players on the Bad News Baseball uh, because it is a good game. You are not likely to find much better than this in terms of baseball on the NES, and that is um, both true and a little bit sad. <laughs> like, not a lot sad. Just... You know, it, it took so long to figure out how to make fielders who didn't completely suck. Like, it really did. It really took forever for people to figure out, like, why don't we put some sort of indicator that tells the player where their outfielders are in relation to where the ball is going? You know? <laughs> like... It, it took people too long to figure that out. And, uh, yeah, that's a, a problem with this game. 
but um two player mode super fun is still 100% playable and you'll just realize that you'll both be equally frustrated by the nutty fielding how grandpa slow it is and generally frustrating it can be but still a uh, very fun game i recommend it and that'll do it for this one i will see you in the next one okay bye